We're gonna get out of here. So we just flagged up there. I'm moving our trucks out of the way. Jim's and mine. And we flagged up there and that guy's gonna take a D6 up there and cut an initial trail. And then there's, I guess, two D8s coming up. And they're gonna come up around this side of the vineyard and cut. I guess they're gonna blow all these trees out of here. Too bad. He's gonna to have to plow right through the fence right there. So here I am in a hillside above Etna Springs in Pope Valley, California on August 21st, I think, 2020. And uh, the D6 went in here and he was able to snaggle around and not have to take out any of these trees. But the D8s, when they come up, they're probably just gonna push these trees over. The way we manage our forests and the way that we, you know, prevent forest fires by making these rapid, not thought out fire breaks. I mean, of course this is an emergency, but if people took care of their property and forced it out, parked out the, uh, the land around their areas that they're using, their dwellings or whatever, we could make it a lot more fire safe and we wouldn't have to do these destructive procedures where they're gonna have to just push down all these trees. You know, it could be planned, it could be parked out, lifted up, thinned. They could all be thinned and then you know, a fire would, you wouldn't have to make it such a huge mess. But that's all, you know, part of planning. Forethought. He's gonna take out the soap. Path of destruction. There's so much junk in here in the ground. Rebar is pounded in the ground. I can't get it out. And it's dangerous. I mean, to be running around out here, rebar in the ground here. I don't know what it's for. They just went right through the fencing. I think this was an old part of the fence. This was to stake down the bottom of the fences. To... But you don't want to be doing this kind of work barefoot. That's for sure. Get over some furs. And... One of them fell sideways like this and jammed, forked in between some trees. So he pulled back and signaled me and I went in there and I made two cuts to open it up so he could keep going in there. I just wanted to make this video to photo document the um, events that transpired in this area and I was totally wiped out this whole week, been going to bed at midnight and just crazy stuff going on, getting up at like 3 o'clock in the morning, 4 o'clock in the morning, people making noise, uh, somebody came outside my house today, law enforcement of some kind at 3 o'clock in the morning and ran the full uh, signals of all their uh, tones, every single one of them, multiple times, and anyways, uh, and then, uh, yeah, so I mean, none of the work that I actually did, I videoed because I'm working, so I don't have time to hold the camera when I'm falling trees. I fell a bunch of big dead pines back there. There was hornets and nests everywhere. Uh, a tree fell back on the uh, D8 when the D8 came up. He had a massive tree fall backwards on him and it jammed up in his, in his guard in, in a bunch of his railings and it kind of forked itself into his blade equipment and hydraulics and everything it was 
So he just stayed there. He was like signaling, honking his horn, and I came over with my little saw and jumped up on his D8 and disassembled it carefully, piece by piece, and got him freed up. And uh, so it's good to have somebody with a saw around when those guys are working. I just stay away from them and stay way back, and that's the opportunities when I when they were doing stuff and they didn't need me. I, that's when I uh, videoed because I was out of their way and they wanted me out of their way, and I only jumped in when they would signal for help and they would. You got to make sure you make eye contact with the guy in the cab at all times. <clears throat> he sees you and you see him when you approach the uh, equipment and that there's some signaling going on. And uh, so, yeah, and uh, it was just uh, smoky conditions the whole time. All right. Take care, you guys.